Stray politic and Spider Loke. East side. Munchie be the mayor. Whoa. And I'm Alex Alonso. And we back to bring y'all another one. And uh we got July 4th. We celebrating the country's birthday, but we don't really care about none of that nah. stuff. Uh what y'all got popping for this uh July 4th? I know you got something going on, something brewing. I'm probably gonna be late catching to a plate. I don't really know what's happened on that day. Um June. Juneteenth this past, we, we celebrated our liberation that day, but I know it's gonna be a time for people to get together. So I'm not gonna run away from nothing. I'll be pulling up somewhere to get a plate, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm moving around I'm from Inglewood, probably hang out in Boston with the homies. You know what I'm saying? It'd be lit everywhere for come 4th of July. I'm going to the beach, y'all. Mm. You about to put your sand? You go. You, you better not have them thong sandals on, bro. Oh man! <laughs> you know the little sandals with the go between your big toe and it. Yeah, I'm feeding up right now. Nah, I'm going to the beach. I got my nephew visiting. Uh, I got all three of my kids gonna pull up, and we're gonna go to the beach. We want to go. On, we actually want to go on the water. That's what I was gonna ask. What beach? Well, I don't say what beach. No, nah, but I can tell you which one we're not going in the water of. Dark water. No, Venice is the is the go to beach for us, but apparently the water in Venice ain't really. Mm. It ain't up to par. Mm. Hmm. So we're going to find a more cleaner beach. We got a, we got about, what, 40, 30, 40 beaches from oh, Long yes. Beach. From Long Beach, curling all the way around the Palos Verdes, coming up Manhattan, Hermosa. We're going to Redondo. Playa, yeah, all the way to Venice, Santa Monica. I've never, I never been to Long Beach. The, the beach, Long Beach? Hmm. But somebody told me, I've yeah, you clear. have. I'm like, well, I don't remember if I did. They got a dope aquarium um, out there. Uh, Cabri is it Cabrillo? It's Cabrillo. I don't want to misquote. It may be. Yeah. Hey, hold on. Is Long Beach uh, insane hood or just in Long Beach? Which Because you, you, you know how like the Venice show line, the, that beach is they hood? I'm not sure if the beach is banging out at the beach. I don't know if the no, beach No, all, all of the, the hoods in Long Beach are are north of PCH. I think once you get to PCH, the hoods kind of end. I don't think there's any hoods south of PCH. Okay, because I know how the Venice show lines, that's the beach, they'd be up there hanging out. Yeah, it is. I, I put the beach, the beach is their hood. Because once you go to Oakwood, you can walk to Oakwood from the beach. That's their hood. Hmm. And we got to let everybody know what uh, what people can hear in the background because I hear it in the headphones. But, hey, it's one of those days we got the window open. But if you're in L.A., it's just normal living, right? Yeah, I know we got hoodies on, y'all, but it's hot. Oh, my mama, <laughs> mama, it's hot. No, but I, I hear the ghetto bird outside. Yeah, we don't know if they're looking for a suspect or if they're monitoring traffic. We've been debating on that for the little last few minutes. What did Ice Cube say about the ghetto bird? A lot. I know, well, he, he's the he's pretty much put the ghetto yeah. bird in hip hop. Ghetto bird was his one. He had the song titled Ghetto Bird, but he's mentioned it in many songs. Yeah, he's the king of uh, in integrating uh, L.A.'s version of the ghetto bird. And you know, L.A. is the is the first city with a ghetto bird. Oh, really? Yeah, first city with SWAT. SWAT mm. was invented by the L.A.P.D. Mm. Yeah, hey, but remember when we first interviewed? Way back in 2016, I told you we don't, go, we don't get the helicopter in Inglewood. Yeah, the airport. We got an aircraft. Yeah, we, it's a fly zone. You know what I'm saying? That's a beautiful thing. I know. Any, back in the robbery days, we was always taught if you got to get get ghosts and you don't really got a destination, go toward the airport because the bird can't go in that area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, we're, we're known for that ghetto bird. But for some reason, I cannot think of an Ice Cube ghetto bird quote right now. Just slip in my Yeah, I can't believe I'm, I'm, I drew a blank. You good with the too. quote. That's why I asked you. You good with those Ice Cube quotes. Man, I'm just gonna, now you're going to make one pop up. <laughs> All right, um, let's move on then. Uh, happy birthday, America. I think America's 246 years old. I might, mm. be, I might be off one or two years on that. But, hey, when you think about it, America's a relatively young country when you think of the history of countries so when is the fourth friday this week we just gonna say this week this week hey america it, it shows people you could be whatever you want to be Munchie got on red white and blue <laughs> you could be whatever I, I ain't gonna tell nobody they can't be some if 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 this man's the president and then he get found guilty and then he run for president again you could be whatever you want to be bro we have to terminate terminator as the govern governor Whatever you want a lot of people wrong. say using examples that um, benefit from white privilege. White privilege? Yeah, you're using white white examples, which is, you know, I guess that's cool, but hmm. how does that help us? Hmm. The, there was the governor of Minnesota, he was a wrestler. What was uh, Jesse Ventura? He became, oh, wow, sure did. He became governor of Miss, Minnesota. But, and, and he was white? Yeah, he's another white example. Ronald Reagan was a, a television personality, too, before he became yeah. uh, 
president or whatever. Man, let Kendrick run for president. I got, I, like, cause there was some idiots that gave uh, Kanye a vote. I know Kendrick could get Mayor Compton, definitely. Oh yeah, he got that. Yeah, he can get that. He got that if you want. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, this came on my timeline that 600 had a fight. I didn't get to really. They tap called it a fight. I didn't get to tap in with it. I did see a clip of 600 and then somebody that looked like half his size about to squabble up with him. So I just like. He probably wasn't even quite half his size if you just do the, the direct math. If you do the weight? Yeah, the weight. I don't think he was even 50% of his weight. I, I think Odo was like 170 or something. And, and what? 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 600? Like 360 something? 360, yeah. That's, that's stupid, bro. Yeah, so uh, what what did you guys get from the, from uh, checking out this fight? What, what, how did this, this fight? Even, who was the opponent? First of all, I can't even say his name, but he he was marketed and billed as a slim guy that knocks out. I think they called him what the the, the giant slayer. The, he, he supposed to be knocking out big guys six hundred side on a routine basis, apparently. So that's why they tried to build it and market it as a fair fight. But for six hundred to claimed to be a professional fighter. I don't believe he did his, his his image as a fighter any justice by participating in that event. And the performance was... Um, Gimmicky? Yeah, it's extremely... I mean, the dude, the weight difference was so disparaging. The guy couldn't stand to get next to 600 without getting knocked down. Not necessarily a punch. Just bodies making contact and the other guy would, like, get sprawled to the ground, bro. But you know the, the, what they uh where they boxed that anybody could climb in the ring right there, right? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, like, I'm familiar. You, yeah, you you go this week and then next week have a fight up there like that. That ain't about nothing, bro. That's really embarrassing me to somebody that claimed to be a uh, a professional, professional. And then boxer. after the fight, right after the announcement of the winner, seemed like he got tackled and dry humped. I didn't get that part either because I don't know what that was about. But somebody entered the ring and. Took him down to the canvas and like 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 a football pal type style. Yeah, similar to that. Yeah. All right. So the guy's name is KC Mays. I don't know, bro. Never heard of bro. Are you guys familiar with him? Not at all. No. And did he get any good licks in during the fight? Not at all. How many rounds was it? Scheduled for three or four. They couldn't quite get that right in the beginning, but it went one and a half, I think, or it went two, and then the dude didn't come out anymore for the third. It was over. All right, so you, I hope he didn't pay for this one too. Because a lot of people said that they thought it was staged. Okay, you, you, you remember being on the phone with uh, Free Ray Ricky Ross, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Hey, hey, so, so you was the one paying for uh, six hundred fights?" I, he said, "Yeah." Mm -hmm. I heard him all ears. I don't know. So it was a big waste of time. Definitely. Was this 11-11 network uh, promoting the I, fight? I don't believe so. But uh, shout out to Nick. Nick did initially make me aware of that location, and I had a conversation with the guy that runs it when we were trying to prepare something in the past. So, you know, I don't think 11-11 was officially involved with it, but Nick probably had his hand in it somewhere in the back end. Yeah, they, they, they tossed... tossed uh, this nigga, my nigga uh, Mike J, some paper to promote it. You know what I'm saying? This dude named Mike J from Inglewood to promote it one weekend or whatever. But you know, so we could just say that the the 600 fight versus Casey Mays was a colossal failure. Extreme. Obviously, there's a size difference. Casey goes for the head. 600 wraps him up. The referee has to break this up. Here we go again. Oh, a right hand by 600. There's a left hand. He's leaning on KC. Oh, three. And I would have to say pretty much everything that this guy 600 does is a failure. Hey, I, I know I know we talk, bro, but I ain't been cool with you since you tried, since you've been recording, folks. It's, it was you know. like a parody of a, a boxing match. You could say that much. I used to get on the phone with the dude. I didn't. Yeah, we I had remember. Him, we had him here at, at at Street TV twice. We indeed did. But something's changed over. Something the Something definitely has changed. Um, he got felt comfortable at one point to go on camera and cock a gun and address me in a very negative way. That blew my mind. So the whole world saw us go through that little ordeal. I don't know what six hundred overall in goal is with some of those antics, but you know that's him. But I know. Uh, Munchie B been asking me since the very first day this dude showed up on the scene. 
He was like, who the F is this dude? Well, you have no idea what, how Munchie B drilled because, me about him. Because you know Munchie B grew up right next to the six O's. Hmm. So anybody that's between 30 and 40, and that's from that section, Munchie B knows who they are. This is why he got so frustrated with me and gave me the main reason why he gave me that title, Crip Attorney. Because we chop up everything we see in our culture on a regular base. And when 600 antics come up, I would never give him exactly what he was looking for when we discussed 600. I used to frustrate him to death. 600 don't even know how I used to not chop him down behind the scenes when I had opportunity to do so. I just, everybody know who everybody is. Like, if I play for the Lakers, you're going to know who, who the boy is over there from the Boston Celtics. You know what I'm saying? Or if you if you a boxer from – Rolling 60s, I want to know what Inglewood families, eight Trey Gangsters, or Hoover you knocked out. Mm. If you was outside, you know what I'm saying? I hear about the fighters from over there. I, you know, never, never heard of the dude. Never in life. But I, hey, you know what I'm saying? They just want to treat gangs like the YMCA and just join. That shit will get you hurt. I don't know what's wrong with him. Well, apparently he has some sort of ties because some people know him. I seen uh, him talking to other folks. So his ties are there, but they kind of like, uh, they're unclear. They're not strong. I never, I never took liberty to, for me to try to decipher them online because, like you say, there are some ties. So my perspective on the ties is not really made for – it don't matter. He got some ties. So I've always accepted it at that. Hey, but if you're a part of any gang because of just one particular person, that's called a buddy pass. So you was on a buddy pass, uh, dude – him and him and the, uh, the the retarded one that was on a buddy pass because because uh because <laughs> because big you hey you know so we make an official gang bang lingo pamphlet yeah hey because because <laughs> if you if you if you from if you from a hood just because of this one particular person then when you fall out with him then what no your point resonates well so so like you you and that one dude was on 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 a buddy a buddy pass because of big you and now it ain't cool with big you you can't go to a hood day well, meeting. Or funeral at the boxing match, he had Eddie Boy with him. I I ain't gonna speak of him. I don't know the specifics with that dude. I just know a little bit about a little bit. But them them two dudes, the, they on, was on a buddy pass. And it, once you're not buddies <laughs> with that particular person, it's all it's all bad I at that it. point. Hey, do we do you know where the venue was at for this fight? Pasadena, California. Oh. Hey, it's in Dina. It's in the same place every week. And anybody could have pulled up. Definitely. Right. right. Uh, the smoker in my hood could get a fight next week uh, right there. It was quite um, quite a bit of armed security with dogs and all type of sh outside the location. I don't know um, who you can give credit for that, but it was heavily armed security on deck. All right, so they make sure they try to keep it safe. Definitely. All right, there's no uh, no n definitely not a place if you're trying to pull up on somebody. Nah, grown men ain't got no business pulling up on each other at business events to, to, to cause no confusion, no way. All right, hey man, I need to know. Uh, I thought we had already cleared the air. I thought everything had been fixed. I thought conversations took place. I thought all misunderstandings were now understood. What's up with you and Brick Baby, man? Shit, I guess this ain't nothing up, because I wasn't really tripping, man. Initially, I was irritated at Brick Baby because the way he was discussing the, potentially, the potential of me having illegal narcotics in my system online and just other little things about that conversation. I'd appreciate when I tried to get at him, he was a little less than receptive. But then like you said, to my understanding, we had ironed it out, it was water under the bridge. We spoke quite a few times, but then um, when I reacted to the video of him twerking, uh, he tend to seemingly get uh, offended because unbeknownst to me, it was his daughter filming him. And I was told that the um, caption where the video came from insinuated that it might have been a tranny so you know when i was in here laughing at him clowning him i stated that i said i couldn't prove it but i thought that the female voice may belong to a a, a switcheroo and then for some reason when i know brick no better he chose to go with the concept that i knew that was his daughter and that was disrespectful and it was basically fuck me he blocked me and all that so i ain't tried to reach out to him since he said don't call his phone that's funny to me because I like if you just check if you could check my my whole history. I don't do many outgoing calls, period, like to nobody. So it's not like a thing for me not to call anyone. But yeah, Brick went big on me. He went, you know, he was just, he, he acted like he was through communicating with me through being my comrade. I didn't necessarily want it to go that way, but that's the decision he made. It seems. Okay, now um, 
once once I found out about the misunderstanding, I sent him a message because maybe hearing from another person of our true intent might have an impact. So I wrote to Brick, sent him a text. I said, Spider, honestly did not know that was your daughter in the video. I hate to see a fallout over a misunderstanding. Apparently there was a caption that there was, and, and there was also a Reddit post where that info came from. He also cleared up the mistake on the following episode that dropped two days ago. Call Spider, please. Oh, when you sent that? Two I days sent, ago? That was a while. I sent this uh, last week on Thursday. Oh, okay. Uh, so I said, and then I, I ended it with, uh, let's all stay united. I got no, what do you say? I got no response from Brick See? on that one. I, I, I had talked to Adam and, and uh, I said that was a caption off Instagram. He said, yeah, it was in the Reddit also. So yep. I guess it came from whatever that Reddit thing is. And then it was a caption on Instagram on one of them little pages. But, but yeah, that's just what the caption said. Like, uh, And you said allegedly. I said allegedly that. and yeah. for a fact, I believe Brick Baby was offended by something other than the fact that that was his daughter and I didn't know it. I think he really got my point when I was telling him we should do our best to only speak highly about one another online, and that can cover all this miscommunication. He didn't quite get that message, so I said, okay, I'm going to show you my version of having fun with things that don't make you look that good. And I think he didn't like the way I laughed about the hoochie mama shorts and the tricking and the twerking in general. And I think he just used that as a scapegoat with his daughter. So I want to also say to, you, to his daughter once again, little mama, if you happen to see this, hear this, I had no idea you was involved in that video. I would have never done something so ridiculous as to laugh at you or clown you. Because I, I later heard that that video came from her TikTok. Later, after all this. Yeah, I knew none of that. Yeah, I heard that later, way later. And I think it's important to note that his daughter wasn't seen in the video. It was just Whatsoever. her voice. We were just hearing her voice. So, you know, everything was just speculation. That's what I hate, the fact that it... It, our, our our communication turned on a point so bogus. Now, if he really had a, if he didn't like me talking about the twerking or the hoochie mama shorts, I could accept that, like, all right. But when you gonna flip it and make me look like I did something inappropriate to a minor, disgust them inappropriately online, that's bullshit, cuz. So do you believe that he's taking the family criticism route, which is the most probably easiest one to, to attach, attach onto? And gather support. Yeah. And his quest to separate from you. Yes, indeed. Even though the other stuff was more real, the other criticism was more real, more legit, what you were saying. Yes, but and it's the type of shit I would never bite my tongue on. I won't take back. Like, I would attempt to feel, I don't want nobody to view me as somebody that would go bad on a, someone's daughter, and he knows that. But I don't give a fuck about people seeing me as a person that don't approve of Crips twerking or wearing hoochie mama shorts. I'm never going to bite my tongue on that. Hey, but Brick, is, he's been through so many things on No Jumper during the last couple of years. It seems like his skin is thick as an alligator, that there's nothing that would come between two neighborhoods. Yeah, I've seen him do passionate speeches, going at the top of his lung, like almost holding back tears, talking about how him and DW Flame, his homies, they always going to be homies no matter what. He cut me short quick. And I've been standing in the gap for Brick, not saying that Brick needed me in the gap. But everybody know Brick's career online has been quite controversial over the last couple of years. And every time he was making headlines with controversy and it seemed like the crowd was against him, I would be standing there supporting him. It's all documented. I don't know what's real and what's fake, though. A lot, man, he, it's, 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 it's weird, bro. So a lot of that shit be uh, manufactured content, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't play that game. So if you see me involved, everything that my input be real now if i'm getting faked by somebody else i can't speak for them so what you mean by that munch that the, the content could be fake like in what way because because uh all right when when dw had double back up to you no know, jumper and then i guess it might have been like i'm i'm assuming it was live you know Brick baby called in like hi we've been playing y'all for two weeks straight i've been trying to order. i it was real but he said it was fake you know what i'm saying just trying to Smooth, smooth the playing field out, like, you know what I'm saying? But we don't know what's really what's fake. Then, I, then you know, P. Nice was saying he wasn't really trying to address the, the story about what happened at No Jumper, whether he choked or, or hemmed up or whatever. But when, when it come out, it's kind of like what Brick Baby said, even though you don't want nobody putting their hands on you, period. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it wasn't, it, it, you was like, out of like on some bro shit, kick back, man, your, 
your daughter here, your your uh your wife, you know what I'm saying? So like I don't know. I can only accept that from certain people to grab me like that though. Like certain just can't know anybody just touch me like, you know what I mean? So I don't every, I don't I don't be knowing what's real and what's fake, man. Should be should be should be strange. Well, you know, it's and no jumper, that's that's an issue. We don't know what's real, what's fake, what's scripted, what's planned. What's pre-planned? I, I saw this ridiculous thing on No Jumper when WAC 100 was sitting there. They was wrapping up the interview on for their show with Adam. His daughter was sitting next to him, and this guy and this tall guy came in there and said, "Overalls." Is, is, and with overalls on, and was like, "Is you WAC 100?" <laughs> <laughs> he did that good. <laughs> and for a second, I was like, "Ooh!" Somebody just walked up on and got into the set. Because I do believe you can get onto the set because I saw I saw Tariq Nasheed get up on Vlad T Vlad mm. TV one day one day to get up on another brother that was being interviewed and that was real. I don't know how Vlad's setup is though. Yeah, it's a different. But so I'm watching this and eventually the dude in the overalls. It was all a skit. Mm. It was all fake. Mm. I could yeah I know I know that's fake. But I want to use that moment to make another point about Brick Baby and his daughter. Cause I remember me and Munchie B was either on Clubhouse or somewhere and we was reacting to that moment. And when we was talking about it, we was like. I was like, then his daughter was right there. Munchie was like, oh, that's his daughter? I'm like, yeah. Uh, and immediately, we we trolling whack, but we immediately, oh, that was a beautiful young lady. I ain't got nothing to say about her. God bless her, da 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 da. Mm -hmm. Now let's get back to trolling. So if we gonna make sure we steer clear of that for a uh, whack, you know goddamn well if I got anything going on with Brick, I'm, I got daughters, bro. I'm not finna be no, come on, Brick, come on. Cause say you don't like something else I said, cause don't let that be it, please. But yeah, I ain't, we ain't gotta go back to that again. <laughs> Hey, but one, one reason why I thought the, the skit was real because Wack turned to his daughter and said, you know what, leave the set. I was like, okay, this is this might be something that can go up. But that whole thing was a skit. But the the, the energy Wack put out, put, uh, put out is somebody even get that close to him or he is going to buck him down. You know what I'm saying? I was, I'm waiting on the gunshots. Mm. Yeah. Well, hopefully that, uh, you know, Brick is, Brick is watching. Obviously he's watching. Uh, he's listening, and uh, Brick, man, we got nothing but love for you over here at Street TV. We got nothing but love for you uh, over here at Straight Politicking, and uh, hopefully uh, you and Spider can mend y'all differences. Uh, I hate to see it uh, between any man, but especially it's it's weird that both of y'all is neighborhoods and and can and, and on the internet as some of the top two Crip representatives, and is having this. Um, I, I want to say a minor misunderstanding. All right, but, 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 all but before we exit break, though, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, he had this this leaked phone call. And uh, I still stand on, bro, that's not gangster recording people, bro. That, that's Or whatever you call yourself, that's that's not gangster, hustler, or groovy. It ain't none of that shit. So, first of all, that's weak. And, you know, he touched on a couple people during this hour-long phone call or whatever. But my name came up. And oh shoot! Your name came up in that call, right? Damn. And, and and he he say uh, you know the the picture I got hanging from the Slauson sign. Yep. I guess after I took that picture, I got ran down on or chased into like a Seven Eleven or something like that. The Seven Eleven across the street from uh, Yee's Chinese Food. And that's that's where I was coming from, right? Yeah. But hold on, let me see. I, I'm 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 gonna, I'm gonna call the homegirl that was with me that day, right? She don't game bank or nothing, but. Call the, the, call the home girl. While you calling the home girl, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the people know that Yee's Chinese food place is not there anymore. They closed it down some years ago, but they used to have some bomb, bomb shrimp, bomb fried, shrimp rice. fried rice. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I actually catered a party one time and ordered all my food from Yee's. Mm. <laughs> I wonder why they closed down. They probably like went back to their country or something. Huh? Yeah. And then right across the street from Yee's, right on, is that Slauson and Overhill? Like Angela Vista, Overhill, same shit. Yeah. Uh, there's a 7 Eleven right over there. And there's an alley behind that 7-Eleven where you're, you'll always see uh, Overhill graffiti hit up in that alley. And uh, I used to hit that corner all the time in high school. <laughs> My girl stayed right up in there. I used to catch a bus right there to go to the Fox Hills Mall back in the day. Come on. All right, here we go. Hi, right, Michelle. Yeah. All right, look. Because I told you earlier I was going to be calling you. I didn't want to tell you what I was going to ask you, right? Uh-huh. All right, remember... Uh, all right. Who, who first of all, who took that? Who took the picture when I was hanging from the Slauson sign? Me. All right, and we, and we was we was what getting like what what we was getting to eat? Some yeast. All right. Now on that picture, somebody said, "All right, look, look, look." So we got the we got the yeast. I was in her comfortable, waiting on the food, <laughs> chilling. 
Okay, we get in your car. We pull to the corner. I'm like, hey, hold on. Take my picture. I hop up there. You take it. And then after that, what happened? We pulled off. No problem. All right. But uh, Brick Baby, he say uh, after that, I got chased into a 7-Eleven or something. Huh? I got chased into a 7-Eleven. No, we got in my car with no problem. Nobody did nothing to you or said nothing to you. Wasn't and no... it was there for a while. Right. Was it just y'all two? Yeah, it was just us. Okay. It, it, was, it, was just, it was just us and we... I mean, I could name many a times where it just being me and you <laughs> and we done did something and ain't nothing happened to you. And you done been somewhere you ain't supposed to be. Yeah, but he he never repeated this like five times. I'm starting to think it was somebody else with glasses. Well, talk about that picture? Yeah, when you we hanging from the stars. No. Yeah. no, we Gosh. literally went to Yee's. If anybody know how Yee's was, Yee's took a long time for your food. We was in a chili. <laughs> Yeah, and you really hopped out. I hopped out with you. We took the picture. We got back in the car, and we left with no problem. All right, man. Though, hey, shout out, hey, shout out your book real quick before I hang up. Which one? Everybody just go, 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 go. Uh, go, go, go on Amazon and get my book, Author Shelly P. C H E L L Y P. I got four books on Amazon right now. All right, bet. I'm gonna I'm call y'all. I'm done recording. Wait, what's her name? What's her name? Shout out Shelly P. Shelly P. Shelly P. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank all you, right. Shelly. Uh, Hello. Uh, all right, all right, Michelle, I'm gonna hit you. All right. All right. I like to clarify something about that phone call too. What about it? The, the nigga Dino was on there chopping it up. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Now I know Dino for some time past, and uh, I, I don't know why. What would make him say what he said on the call about snatching a gun out of my hands? Oh wait up! Your name was brought up in that phone call my, too. My, 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 my. Okay, that's, 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 just for everyone to know, this phone call was over an hour long. I listened to the first fifteen minutes of it, and then I just I, I just cut it off. So I it was, listened to it. So the uh, me and Cuz had. And wait, let's just let's let's just um, explain to the people. This is a phone call between Loose Cannon and Brick Baby, Brick Baby, and another brother. And and and, and a nigga named Dino. And let's just clarify that Loose Cannon was illegally recording this phone call while it was taking place in real time, and then posted it to the or someone posted it to the internet. Look, the the nigga said he snatched the gun out of my hand. No man ever upon the face of the earth has ever snatched a gun out of my hand. I would not even be discussing no interactions with a gun with another nigga unless it happened on this phone call and it came out. There is a situation in our past where I allow him to borrow a weapon that I never got back. And it was under like, oh, I need for a lick. He went to this thing, shit went bad. I got you, I got you, I got you. He ended up going to prison before um, I was able to get it straightened out. And it was kind of like water under the bridge, no big deal. But ain't nobody never took a snatch nothing from you. So I don't know why he would say that. Is there a, a incident where he might be confusing it, where there's some misunderstanding? Well, he just told you. I know, no. but no, that's that's different. No, from, no, it sounds like um, giving somebody a gun no, or letting someone borrow, like having a real a real. We have one dynamic between us that includes a weapon that used to be mine. He had it, and I didn't get it back. No, the reason why I ask is maybe. Maybe he took he snatched a gun from somebody else. Nah, you ain't borrow, mm -hmm. ain't borrow, mm -hmm. get nothing confused mm -hmm. like let, that. Let, and let me finish for the people that are listening. All right. Maybe he snatched a gun from somebody else during the same period you gave him one, and he's confusing the stories. That could happen. You jack one dude, you get something, someone else gives you something, and then you forget who was who. Dino know he ain't snatched nothing from me. Okay. I don't know why he would even say that, but he know he ain't did that. And uh, it, 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 it almost seemed like because. The, the short time my name did get brought up, and he was like, yeah, you know, me and Munchie was, you know what I'm saying, outside around the same time, you know what I'm saying? He, he cool, he ain't no threat. Like, he telling Lewis Cannon that, because I, I could imagine his homies probably get out of my body even sitting across from me, you know what I'm saying? So I take it more so he could, like, trying to, like, wa water it down a little bit. But, like, I mean, I, I just don't pose a threat. And they don't, people don't want to put that shit out on the internet. That's why I say every time I don't want no pie, beefs, remember with milk? But people, niggas keep poking bears and shit, and you know what I'm saying. I'll let that, that, that let that be known. Like I don't want no pop beats and all that little internet shit. But you know what I'm saying. You putting shit like that in that that the loose color nigga head to my who not a threat. Shit. All right. So let's just clarify these two situations that came up in the phone call. You clearly went to Yee's, took a picture with your with your friend, left. Not a problem. Not an issue. Nothing ever happened. 
Nah. That Brick Baby's claiming. Okay. Yeah, they, they take forever for that shit to get ready. I was up there for some time. Yeah, and, and in that situation, Brick Baby could be confusing chasing somebody else. I think he might have chased somebody else. That's more uh, a thing than... than, than you yeah, forget, your, forget theory, you your theory works better yeah, on yeah, his yeah, situation yeah, yeah. than on my situation. I always have four eyes, whether it was glasses or shade. So you, <laughs> you chased the wrong nigga with glasses. So like, if you listen to the call, he chased somebody into 7-Eleven or some shit. In my hood, you get chased in 7-Eleven. We go come in after you, you'll get stumped out or, you know what I'm saying? Uh, shit, what I was doing, hide behind the chips? I don't know. I don't get it, but... Okay, so so in, in your situation, Spider, you're you're saying this guy is clearly embellishing this entire story. Man, this was my friend, my homie, my partner. We was claiming cousins, bro. It was never no con. We never had an argument, disagreement, or nothing. Uh, me and Puto went to Nipsey funeral, just me and Puto. But you know how after that everybody waited for his body to come through the city. Yep. After the funeral, I was with this nigga. We was posted up, me, him, and Puto. This is my partner. He just did a little stretch in prison. The night he went to prison, we were together. So when he got out and he was linked up with them dudes, that's where the first miscommunication came with. And uh, so I guess, you know, whatever, he politic and chopped it up, talking. We came to an understanding. But I realized this conversation was from like some weeks ago. And the nigga, uh, I don't, I just didn't expect he was gonna lie like that. I did allow him to use my two at one point, agreeable, whoop de whoop. Then he, you know, I shit happened. I can't say it was true or not. He hit me with the, it went bad. I had to whoop, wop, 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 wop. I'm gonna get you. And we, we remained friends for a period of time until he, he, happened, he happened to go to prison one night we was together. So how, how long ago did this gun situation happen? This was say, uh, I think this was like either pre right before COVID or around in that time i think i think about four years ago four or five years ago okay so it was before the nipsey funeral yes and we, and we were still at the nipsey funeral together i believe yeah okay so that's 2019. yeah, yeah. Hey. Well, well 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 i got pictures with the nigga and all that we'd have been out oxnard hanging out just me him and his girl at the bar his girl used to do bartending so we'd go to where she working and hang out and have a ball so he ref he referred to you as his relative at one time oh yeah definitely Oh, uh, he became cousins on that phone call with, with Brick Baby too, though. So all three y'all related, huh? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. We was pushing it on some, you know. Blood cousin shit. Yeah, yeah, but him and Brick Baby seem to have realized they really may have some genetics. Some re relation. And they, and if, with that being said, they kind of favor. Now, after you heard that, did you pick up the phone and, and call him up and say, hey, what's no, going on? No, because when I, I first, when I first was puzzled about it, I realized that for one, Cause he already, we already spoke and re, uh, agreed to not be clashing. So I knew that I realized that the conversation was before then, but I still just had to clarify that ain't nobody on the face of the earth ever, never, ever snatched anything from me, let alone a gun, including cuz. Although it's like an embellishment. He did end up in possession of a weapon that he got from me that I never got back though. He like, saw. You know, he taught that story more than once, bro. Yeah, then it just, it just sounded like a cloud chase to me. Yeah, but he know better than that. It, that that's not no confusion. That's a deliberate story you trying to tell. Yeah, but he know better than that. So my grandbaby heartbeat, he ain't snatched no gun from me. Hmm. And and that's the first time you've ever heard of that version. Yes, of yes, yes. That, that blew my mind. I was, I was totally shocked to hear him say that. So at some point, you 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 want a conversation with him, a, a private conversation. I'm, I'm, for what? In order to do what? To say, hey. You lie like what, what? What do we normally say when, when we hear somebody lying on our name? All right, if if it's a public lie, I'll get in the black box and say that's a lie. I don't call and ask whack why you lying about me. Okay. I I I don't, I don't be trying to uh, cause you know like like it be a fiasco amongst the crips on the internet, and and I don't know what type of dude he is. So I, he I a get, fool. I, yeah, I get on I get on the line like you know what I'm saying this black community. Nah, look, he a big old fool, homie. I ain't tripping. I'm, I just want to, cause, cause he, he had so much disdain in, in, in his voice when he was like, Spider Loco let a blood on his platform. I'm like, huh? Like, that seemed like it almost came from like a, uh, a opposition of my hood or something. Like, why you, why you sound like I, that? You know he... what? I also think some of them statements that he was sounding like real ridiculous on, he was throwing them out there trying to bait Brick Baby to bite and say some shit on them subjects. Yeah, Brick didn't didn't bite. He, he didn't bite on everyone. No, no, he, he didn't. No, he didn't bite on on, on me at all. But uh, I'm like, damn, I was wondering. So maybe that was a part of his little. You know what I'm saying? It may be because it's so it's so shocking. 
it, I mean, maybe that what it was. Maybe he was saying that, not expecting to put it out, and was just trying to get Brick Baby to say, "Ah, oh, you robbed him." He was a, I don't know, but he know he ain't never snatched nothing from me. Hmm. All right, uh, let's move on to. Uh, I want to talk about this bail hearing. That hold on, hold on, hold on, one more thing. For sure, they recorded my boy Bosco, bro. That bro, that's not straight. And that, and then based on these recording phone calls, and what 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 if somebody would that be? It wouldn't be admissible. Especially uh, superior court, May, maybe it get from municipal. It get, it get uh, well, it's an illegally acquired uh, phone call. So if you get a good lawyer, a good lawyer would be able to just say everything in that phone call is inadmissible. All right, not the uh, hopefully up, not not up to hold up traffic, but we ain't gotta say his name. It's somebody from Inglewood neighborhood, Paru, that was mad at him for recording the call, trying to help Suge get out of jail, right? And I, I heard Wack himself say he wasn't cool with the way. He did that, but he recorded Bone talking bad about Big U and mm. called Big U immediately. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm I'm trying to figure out where did these game bangers get recording phone calls, and being cool at? Even the jailhouse let you know when you're being recorded. GTL, let, I don't understand that shit, man. But we can move on. And, and, and on top of that, ain't nobody gonna start nothing that much no Inglewood niggas, bro. Like we we close knit. We, niggas already had it out. Uh, Inglewood, Queen Street, Queen Street versus this uh, NHP. So it ain't gonna go nowhere. But I see how whack laughing like he just about to get somebody to show it, bro. That ain't ain't none of that shit cool. There's only three people that I know of that's recording phone calls and putting them on the internet. I'm gonna say them right now: Six Hundred, Whack One Hundred, and Loose Cannon. Am I missing anybody? That's the, the uh, consistent participants. Yeah, I ain't with that shit, bro. And let me just let let everybody know that no one's pressing this issue, but it is a felony. I believe it's a felony. I think it be, can be treated as a misdemeanor and a felony to record a phone call in the state of California where both parties are in California. So, you know, every state has different rules on that. But in California and Nevada, it is illegal. Hmm. So somebody one day is going to get pissed and, and make it an issue. Mm-hmm. You know, I know Spider ain't going to do it. I know Munch ain't going to do it. I know. Nah, I, I know Bosco ain't gonna do it, but I, somebody one day is. I sued. I sued the Dickies on somebody. I sued. Hey, look, bro. They say uh, soon the civil thing is snitching or whatever. Shit, y'all got me fucked up. I I sued the fuck out somebody if I got the angle to do it. How do you feel about the civil thing, Spider? Um, I think it's case by case. Mm-hmm. And depending on what you did to kind of get yourself caught up in this, whatever situation, if you have the ethical right to go and flip it like that but since civil is never about you going to jail but just telling ain't always been about jail because when my grandma and them used to run us out the living room what nobody going to jail and they were like quit quit come here and tell them for whoop your ass yeah that's true too man but that's 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 minor league we talking about big league when you was a kid you know what i'm saying no but i'm saying ethically i'm not saying you know Mm -hmm. you know you can't bro if you jump out at that same motherfucking yeast and walked in there and dissed and then they, you got rushed, and then you want to do a lawsuit. You feel me? It's like all civil ain't cool. It depends on what you did to get in that situation. Oh, so so let's say um, 40 Glock civil case against the game. The one I told him to file. Is that right? Yes. I don't, I don't think that was snitching either because... But that was just a regular... W- w- two men having a clash in the streets. But I was, I was doing it to... Low key help him destroy his image, though. <laughs> oh my mama, mama. Okay, so, hey. so you made an exception there. No, I was oh. I was making him believe it was an exception, so he would jump out there so everybody could laugh at him. I told him, I said, "Baby, Lane was suing Tupac the State when he died." <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, if he was, huh?" Hey, but but what 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 person you know could whip somebody holding a phone and hitting them with one hand? It's it's not possible, and and it was it's clear that the shit was doctored up. You know what I'm saying? And it's clear that there had to be other people present behind the camera drawing yeah. guns. So, so would that would that motivate you to do a suit, Munchie? If uh, if I could get some immediate get back, me being t- like a one, mm. I'll leave it alone. But if you out the way and you know what I'm saying, like I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm I'm sue you. I'm gonna sue you. I, 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 a lot of these people they be acting like they outside and they not. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. You not obtainable in reach. I'm gonna sue you. Like I don't, they call it what they want. I don't, you know what I'm saying. Did it ever work out for for uh, Forty Glock on that lawsuit? I never got a real definite disposition. I think he won, but was awarded some crumbs, something very minute, if I recall correctly. 
Okay. Mm. And you you and Forty Glock were cool at one point and Yeah, we was cool for quite some time against my better judgment. He had did some weenie shit some long time ago. He wasn't appreciated in my circle, but I'm not a hater and he ended up in my circle outside of my authority. So, you know, I was just keeping it cool with him. But he did a lot of shit I didn't appreciate. But then the last thing he did was come on my live and lie in front of the world about something we both knew was real, really true. So I, I like kicked him off my live. I haven't communicated with him since. That's been about four or five years. Do, 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 the, the last incident on your live, do I have anything to do with somebody getting rubbed down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, so I, I might've caught it, cause this is before me and you even uh, yeah, locked yeah. in and even know each other. Yeah, it was, um, yeah. yeah, we yeah. both used to witness a certain thing take place on tour. The whole, everyone did. Mm. And he happened to be on my live and I was talking about the oil and um, he wanted to deny it. And I just couldn't believe that after I've been his only friend on the internet for so long that he would l lie in order to defend another n when he know it's true. So so he he, he start this man out just like you start a couple people out. Cause you gave some passes and you held your tongue on a lot of stuff. Who I lied. When did I lie and say I didn't see something I saw? No, no. Oh, you sent. Oh, so you wanted him to stamp what you was talking about? Hold on, I'm gonna be very clear once again. He and I witnessed something together over and over again with a whole group of people. And when I brought it up on my live, he denied it. He lied. Yeah, I, 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 I ran across that so many years ago. He ain't nothing like me, homie. So you trying to find a way to compare me and catch me off my, off my. Uh, no, not nah. compare the two people. He don't do like, like me. He don't do like me. I push a line. I got no smut, no goofy, weird shit, none of that. Every situation I get in, I push my line thoroughly. Nothing like him. <laughs> if I choose not to speak on certain shit, it's because we on the internet and we on camera and everything ain't for the camera. All right, so what about when he, he wasn't accepted in your circle? He was accepted because the circle was the genius circle and I didn't have nothing to oh, do that with circle. it. He would not have been one of my personal choices. But he came around because he was managed by the same people as Mob Deep. He wore khakis and t-shirts, and the New York niggas looked at us like the same. And I ain't no hater. You couldn't control that circle. Yeah, so I wasn't gonna be around whispering like, man, that nigga ain't. I'm just let it develop the way it developed. So naturally, you would have been, you wanted to say, man, that dude's from Colton. He ain't from where I'm from. Shout out to my <laughs> niggas from Colton, but that <laughs> hey, would have been part of it. real ones everywhere though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I acknowledge that, but he still just we was different we wasn't we never they thought we because we came from the same region we knew each other better we can't we didn't know each other like that. i didn't know cuz and y'all both crips so they thinking y'all all that all that and i didn't ever want to shit on his whatever it was so it got to like develop like more of a unified thing than it actually was hmm. and he liked it, of course he played on that mm -hmm. you seen him going interviews and people asking him questions he knew he wasn't signed to g unit but since he did it, I didn't want to be the one on the very next interview to be like, man, that ain't signed. I just let him do his shit. Hmm. But in the process of that, he did quite a few little winny things I didn't like. And you know, I told you, I play chess. I don't always, the checkers is boom, boom, boom. You let shit bubble, you let it boil. So, you know. <laughs> hey, I tried to get 40 Glock on this platform as far back as probably 2015, 2016. And for whatever reason, I can never get bro to pull up. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start calling people out starting today. Forty Glock is the first dude that said he would do an interview, never pulled up, and then I see you popping up on Vlad and no. Does he, was he on No Jumper? Yeah, I think he did a No I Jumper. Know. Well, I, I remember, I remember um, Adam said the last one of the other time we was over there. He said he did have him up there before. And it was crazy. Let me tell you what's crazy about that is I helped defend his case out in the city of Colton. Wow. Many, many, many years ago. You know, I was on his defense team. He All shot I, at the police allegedly. He no, that that was a, he had a shootout with the police in ninety in ninety six. I just said allegedly for the case. You know, people. No, say that, that, that that case is oh, is, okay. is uh, already well known and established. It's in the books. And yes, yeah, in the books. In nineteen ninety six, he had a shootout with the police. That came up in um in our case. I think that was maybe twenty fourteen or fifteen, when he was back in court on a on a thing, and I was on the team with him. And uh, let's put it all out there. Your lawyers was tripping on paying me. <laughs> you never pulled up for an interview. We talked again in, Min in Minneapolis during the George Floyd thing. Hmm. You still never pulled up on me. It's been at least a decade, but I see you got, like doing interviews with the massa. And, and we'll I, just leave it at that. I got him in movies, turning him on to my agent. And he go in there, land a movie role, and get on there and let, ask a nigga, let me see your dick. Huh? Yeah. I wonder why he never showed us. To, he did a movie with Marky Mark. 
he never like after he did it like hey you see my movie you see my movie he never brought it around pulled it up and then when i finally stumbled it on there his scene is to the nigga, like, let me see your dick. He like asking nigga, begging nigga to see his dick. Oh, I'm thinking you're talking about behind the scenes. No, this is the, the trailer actual film. This is his role in the movie. Hey, that's acting though. So. Yeah, that, yeah, I'm thinking he like. That's when like DeAndre Bonds got raped in lockdown. And he say he oh, regret he that. He regrets doing that scene, but that's action. Shout out Williams Talent Agency. My, my, my talent agent, Larry Williams. The last thing he sent me was an actor supposed to be in prison wearing a pink apron, making some pink cupcakes, <laughs> and calling himself a bitch. I did not take the audition. Fuck, yeah, that's acting. All right, what about Holiday Hearts? What's my boy name from Holiday Hearts? What's that? The movie, man. The nigga from Baby Boy, the dad. Melvin, what's his name? Oh, he's a real actor, so he might have did some Tyrese? shit. Tyrese, you talking about Tyrese? No, he yeah, talking, about, he talking about Vin Rains. He oh, was, oh, didn't yeah, see Vin. Holiday Hearts? He was a whole drag queen in that motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Oh, what about in Pulp Fiction? Who got who got fucked in the ass in Pulp Fiction? Um. I ain't seen was that it Ving, was, did Ving Rames? Was it Ving Rames? He did it again? It? No, there was there was some. Your boy DeAndre Bond got fucked like in three movies. <laughs> he got fucked in three strikes. Ain't who you talking about, right? No, Ving, and Pulp Fiction had a uh, <laughs> he said like three had a uh, he did. <laughs> had a, a a butt a butt stealing scene. But I'm gonna say I ain't, Pulp Fiction. I ain't never seen Pulp. Fiction. You ain't even seen Pulp Fiction. Oh no. my gosh, you got. I know see. that's a class. So many, I haven't yeah. seen many classes. Yeah, my boy Stacy from the Wood. I, I don't think three strikes is that bad, but uh, Ain't that Bonds? the other one, yeah, yeah Bonds. He, the other one, locked, locked, locked up, locked up. That that was that was kind of like you know what I'm saying, kind of uh, American me ish. Yeah, that one was bad. That was worse than three strikes. So you say forty Glocks role that that was a a, a role you would have never taken, never in life. Okay, but it wasn't as bad as one of uh, DeAndre Bonds's role. No, not at all. Okay, well, but for forty Glocks image, it's bad. Are we we gonna say forty Glocks is a wobbler. Like they yeah, say, it's a wall. wobbler. Yeah, no, it's, I, I wouldn't just deem him like. Eh. Hey, remember when when uh, Will Smith played uh, the gay dude? Yeah, the I heard. Yeah. Of separation. Also disappointed. Yeah. You know, Will Smith was the coolest in the world to me, bro. Yeah. On, on, on Fresh Prince, he used to wear the jacket inside yeah. out, mm -hmm. and then I flipped to that, and it was like back to back. Like that was on. I was like, oh, he disappointed me, bro. I know, but if would you let a role like that? No, I'm not doing no shit interfere like that. if you could have a career like Will Smith, where you're making thirty million dollars a movie. I, I guarantee you 99% of the people will say, I will take his career. I'm going to just quote. He, he would have, go ahead. I'm going to quote the open line from one of my most recent favorite songs. When you're sticking to the script, it's a lonely road. My mama, mama. Yeah, I, I, I quoted that before. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I, I can't take that type of role with, 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 with Will Smith did. Hey, you know Denzel must turn down a lot of roles because I don't think he's, and maybe somebody might correct me, but I don't think he's ever did no gay stuff. I don't know. I don't believe so either. You know, and he's and, done something even more monumental than that, in my opinion. If, how many times have you seen him kiss a white woman in a movie? Is the answer zero? He got Tony movies once. Once. Be and he said it's only once because when he did it the first time at the premiere, when it happened, he heard all the black women react in the movie house. He said he wrote it in his contracts, and then he never did it again. Yeah. What? Denzel's yeah. one of those few actors that he has those stipulations. I salute him for that. You can get away with that. I mean, Will Smith's at a point now where he can say, I ain't doing this, I ain't oh, doing yes. that. But, but the same person that put him on to Fresh Prince is the one that had him doing a gay movie. And they got a theory about that. You know what I'm saying? Is that uh? I, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I only have one recent conspiracy theory. But but that ain't, oh, man, Will, he... After set it off, Queen Latifah says she had it rolled into her movies that she can't die in no movies no more because she don't want to miss a potential sequel. All right, let's um let's move on to something else. Uh, we had enough forty Glock and gay talk <laughs> for this segment. Um, what y'all think about? We talked about this uh, last episode that Keefe D's bail got turned down, but we were unaware that there was actual testimony. From WAC 100, from Cash Jones, that pretty much uh, boomeranged any opportunity, any chance for Keefe D to be free right now. Technically, Keefe D should be free right now because it's not because a judge didn't grant him bail. It's not because um, if someone else would have bailed him out, it wouldn't have happened. It's specifically because WAC 100 is the one bailing him out why he was denied. And not just because Wack is belling him out, it's because Wack does what we know he does. He ran his mouth way too much. <laughs> and that's what happened. 
Did you um the bail hearing was long? Did you guys uh, tap into the bail hearing? That's whack part. I didn't I didn't I didn't tap into it at all. I just heard that uh, the judge kind of chewed them up. That's it. All right, I'm gonna play. Uh, I'm gonna play a clip of it. All right, so I think we have foundation for the Vlad interview for 21. You may play. His lawyer did an interview recently and said, Keefe D is a liar. He made up all this stuff just to make some money from people like, you know, me for interviews and to get out of a, you know, a serious drug case. He was never in Las Vegas. All this is fake. And he's not connected to Tupac's murder at all. Yeah, I believe him. You believe him? Do I believe him? That's up to law enforcement. <laughs> That's I'm not gonna say. <laughs> Keep he got a bail. He's supposed to be home. <laughs> That's up to law He's supposed to be home in the next month. I've been thinking about going to Belly Mouth. You gonna bail out Keefe D? Yeah, it's only seventy five thousand. Well, cause it's a million dollar bond. Like seven fifty. Seven fifty. So you gotta put up seventy five thousand. Yeah, I've been thinking about going to get him do and and what the stipulations that I do the series on it. People will watch it. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Jones, did you hear that interview? Heard the interview. Yeah, and it's fair to say that. You understand, Brian? Wait, wait, sir, sir. You can't answer my questions. I'm sure Mr. Arnold has questions for you. You can answer them as well. Right? So it's fair to say that you said you would bail Mr. Davis out as long as he follows some stipulations, correct? Well, it's interchangeable. Right. You know, you say, sir, 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 my question requires, sir, my question simply requires a yes or no answer. Did you tell? Did you tell, or did you say, that you would bail out Mr. Davis, assuming he follows some stipulations? Uh, we're, we're black, you know. Me and Black discussed that. I mean, we were going to say that. We discussed what we we're going to do before we interview. That everybody knows that about Black. And, and in fact, you uh, you said that you would bail him out in return for uh, an agreement to do a series on Mr. Davis's life, correct? Um, that's what I said to Vlad, but EPD is already involved with somebody. Uh, with that, I believe, with his book, I have no contracts with him, no dealings with him on that. Okay, so you're saying what you said, uh, yeah, it's just not true. We have, before you go on Vlad, you're, you have a discussion about what you're going to talk about, what needs to be said so we can drive the views. Nothing about Vlad or nothing about YouTube that says that we're being truthful about what we're saying, we're entertaining. I'm just, you know, being truthful with you. I do a lot of interviews. I do interviews every week on No Jumper, and we sit there and we BS about things and we exaggerate things or we make up things. But it's a view thing. They pay you for that. Okay, so you are exaggerating or not telling the truth when you're on flat TV? I mean, you see the number I gave wasn't accurate. I was gonna, you know, that's what the conversation was. I would have gave you the accurate number, that's what it was. All right, man. Um... We just heard a clip of Keefe D, Keefe D bail hearing, and the prosecutors, I guess, cross-examining WAC 100 via, what is that, via telephone, Zoom. Zoom or something, about things that he stated that he wanted from Keefe D uh, before he bailed him out. Now, gotta, everyone has to understand that Keefe D is not allowed to get involved in any entertainment that's profitable while this case is going on. It's clear WAC 100 wants to bail him out to make it to, for a deal, and he's trying to figure out a way to convince this court that that's not the case, even though he's already said it. And we also saw him answer, they played the Vlad TV interview, where he's trying to say that, oh, that's just for entertainment, basically. And this goes back to my, my point that I've been saying many times before, and me and Muncher, we talked about, you asked me about this on, on a previous episode about paying for interviews. Mm -hmm. When you pay for interviews, you end up getting sometimes, oftentimes, outlandish answers that are definitely untruthful. Because you're trying to give them your money, yeah. their money's worth. Now, I don't know if how much a Vlad TV interview with WAC is truthful and untruthful, but there's obviously a an exchange for an interview. I give you money, you answer my questions, and once you engage in that business relationship with an interviewee, you're not sure if those answers are going to be 100% honest. So he's over here admitting it in court. So when do you think he's being more honest, on Vlad or in court? I have no idea. No, I asked, what, you don't have any assumption? 
Uh, you know what? I'm a, I'm gonna have to say he's been dishonest probably on both both places to a certain degree. No, I think he was honest on Vlad, he, on, on his intentions and what he was trying to pull off. Mm. Yeah, I think he was being honest with Vlad, but you know he got to say what he got to say in court so he can still get what he's trying to do accomplished. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I don't know how how much of a deal does he really have with with Keefe D? How far are they gonna take this? He he went into detail with Vlad about plans that I don't believe the plans are really in the works until. Until he gets Keefe D free, then they can start, you know, rolling that that motion. You know, I I he made that DA sound like a, a top tier DA when it was simple. Like, come on, bro, when you get on them phone calls, you know it's recorded. You talked about these dealings on a on a a, a, a jail call. That's like, whacking his infatuation yeah. with Crippen, though. He's been having this infatuation with Crippen for what a What about his infatuation time. with recording calls, though? That's deep, that's deep he, too. He recorded all day, every day, but. But, he but, but you didn't know you was being recorded then talking about uh, contracts and life rights. So that right. I mean, shit. You know, I don't, I, I, but he, he he a hustling motherfucker though. He, he get his he get his he get what what uh, what, what Krim I say is uh, increments. Yeah. Uh, good idea when you went about that shit wrong. He talked too much, bro. He was all on club. I was discussing it. And, you know what I'm saying? It's all over the internet. Him him talking about it. Yeah, there should there should be absolutely zero discussion about what he plans to do with Keefe D on Clubhouse, on Vlad TV, on No Jumper. There should be zero. Look, I'm working on a project right now. I've never said anything about it on the, mm -hmm. you know, on a podcast. Multiple projects we got. <laughs> you know, to say. You know and, and he he's bringing up <clears throat> details and plans he's got with a, with a, I guess, a murder suspect. And what was the outcome of this bail hearing? Bail denied. <laughs> hey, me being white. You already up. You 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 uh you rich. Why why you bailing a snitch out? I could see if it was like a have not. You know what I'm saying? So you call him a snitch because he snitched on dead people, or are you aware of him being involved in some other scenario? No, he didn't. The old boy from from New York. He tried to set up. Wait 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 wait. When Keefe D confessed to Greg Cading, Terrence was still alive. The driver of the car. Mm -hmm. Only only ones that were deceased were. Was uh, Baby Lane and Trey? On I'm um, Dre, Big Dre, Freaky Dre, Freaky Dre. Uh, the driver was still alive. Mm, I wasn't. I never caught that detail. Yeah. Uh, the, the uh, Zip, Von Zip from New York. He tried to, you know, the, he tried to tried to get that dude set up. Tried to come visit him in New York with some some undercovers and. And you know what I'm saying? Do his, oh yeah, do his yeah. Thing. That's that's another thing that uh, Keefe D did. He mm. wore he wore a wire on Von Zip in New York. Wore a wire? Yeah, to record because because the L.A. authorities wanted to get proof that that um, Von Zip and and Diddy <laughs> were involved with Keefe. So but, Keefe agreed to go to New York and and meet with Von Zip and try to get him to admit. But Von, I don't think Von Zip bit. Right? Zip, Zip didn't, didn't bite, and then they're kind of lucky that. Hyper, like, if 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 P Diddy did give him some money to to pass along, it never made it. Then it would have been murder for hire. But since it never made it, you, you know what I'm saying that's the low part. You get. so Keefe D wore a wire for the fans. I believe so. Let, 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 uh, we got we got to double check that. But he did. He had a meeting with Keefe D that was supposed to be recorded by law enforcement. And Zip was on his on his on his A game. I'm sorry, Keefe D had a meeting with Von Zip. Yeah, and Von Zip didn't. Uh, he didn't give up anything. Hmm. He's too smart. Actually, he 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 died of uh, health complications a, a few years back. Rest in peace to him. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. But 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 I being being up, you already rich. You know, yeah. I wouldn't be bailing out no snitch, bro. Well, he made sure Takuchi had some financial situations when he came home from being a huge rat too. Yeah, true, but I think Takashi would have been all right regardless, but yeah, I hear you though for sure. And he also maintained a relationship with Stutterbox after he claimed Stutterbox told on him for like twenty years. What he did to what he did with uh Goofy Badass, I think that was probably his plan to do it with Takashi. Mm. But it was a little bit more personal with Goofy Badass because he made 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 Paru look horrible. Blueface told on Tester. He supported him and also gave a statement in that case as well. I ain't up on that one. Yeah, so he has a trend. How many is that being right now we just named? That was that three or four? It's about four. Okay, you being from East Coast, what about Blue Da Vinci? You know, what, which way you uh, swing with that? You Is he all bad? 
it, he, what, what Blue Da Vinci saying is uh, solid or how that go? Well, I don't think Blue Da Vinci situation and bled over to EC politics. I don't think the homies know enough about what took place. I do know Meech and Jay Diggs implicated him as being all bad with the safety valve shit. So I can't really call on what blue politics is with that. With the, I don't know if the homies got involved in that like the, shit. The feds is too sophisticated, man. With all these little terminology, ter terminologies and mm -hmm. shit. Like, uh, no, nah, that shit, that shit crazy. Yeah, that's a that's a BMF thing, right? Yeah, it's a yeah. BMF thing. But the one nine knows would want to would would want to tap in and, and find out what really happened with Blue Da Vinci, wouldn't they? Well, you know, I'm sure some people might be interested, but Blue's real situation and got so much bigger than that his he didn't went through it with the one i know so it's, it's a whole lot of shit, bro i was in the county with his brother pokey from when i know shout out pokey little light skin isn't he yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 but but a safety valve is considered telling if if indeed he took a safety valve i can't lie my best education on safety valve came from jay diggs and from where he described it yeah you have to brush up on that shit, bro <laughs> that federal level like yeah, everybody that's been to the feds know about them safety valves. Yeah, he gave a pretty good description of what it was, unless somebody can correct him. That's my understanding of safety valve of what Jay Diggs explained it to be. I ran it by other people as well. Yeah, but how, how uh, Blue Da Vinci described it, it seemed like, I don't know, whoever sound better saying it is going to win with me because I don't know nothing about the feds. Because if I hear Blue Da Vinci explain it last, it's kind of like, oh, okay. I get that point. Yeah, saying. if I hear how, how Jay Diggs put it, I'm like, okay. So me being so out the loop with a federal system, so that's that shit is. Now, why is Wack always a defender of Blue Da Vinci? He always says, oh, like, right off the top, oh, he didn't tell. He is like going against the grain. Like, if everybody say Lakers, he gonna say Clippers. You know what I'm saying? He's like going against the grain. Blue Da Vinci also got some roots in the Valley as a youngster, so I don't know if that got something to do with it. Uh, I thought that uh, Wack liked to expose those that are told. But but you say you like the word selective politicking. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, he got his favorite he snitches. Ain't he ain't exposed Blueface. He got his... He got, hey, I, Blueface I, told on Tester. Okay, but but how do we know that? Who, yeah, that's what I said. When I leave here, who, I'm, I'm going to look into it. it. Who, who dropped that? It's the Serenios that got told on. That's on the run. That's trying to wait for the statute of limitations to go up. That ain't trying to make it a big old thing because they still hot as fish grease. Oh. All right, well, back to this bail hearing. Uh, what's y'all whole, you know outlook on this thing how, how, how did it look how, how do you think Keefe D felt after <laughs> having to sit there and this dude just pretty much you know torpedoed the whole plan stupid <laughs> that's how he felt how, how do you think he appreciates whack still well he's got a, that was his best option what he didn't have no other option who else is trying to bail him out who's trying to help him out I'm surprised they can't come up with um 10 percent or whatever it is 12 percent 15 because whack put oh, yeah, 15 15 Come on, man. The homies can come up with 15%. <laughs> what? Hey, he was begging uh, Puffy for money through the interview. Come on, brother. Love. Everything. I'm not sure it's all love when it comes to the homies. Yeah, he might have situations all around the board when it comes to like getting support. You already from the crib. You know, see. I'm going to leave it at that. Well, he got that home in Henderson. Uh, shoot, the way that property values have skyrocketed over the last several years. I know you got a little bit to 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 put up to to bail out. But at this point, at that age, and you have family, sometimes you can't be as selfish as and you gotta let some provision stay in place for the people that really matter. When you got wife and other people that's dependent on the things you got established. I'm kinda surprised they didn't just let the bell fly based on he's sick anyway, on some compassionate type shit. You know what I'm saying? Don't they got compassionate release? Yeah, they got compassionate release, but how sick is he? You got to be terminally ill to get compassionate release. Yeah, like they, they just let out um, Babo from Florence 13, like in June of 2013, the Mexican mafia dude that ran Florence. Mm -hmm. That was part of the, the truce with the Washington. East Coasters. Mm -hmm. They let bro out and he died three weeks later. Damn. You know, they hmm. knew he was going to die. Oh, so he was literally on the clock. Yeah. Um, who else that happened to? Oh, Matulu Shakur, Tupac's stepdad. He mm. was in, he'd been in prison since like 80. 30, 40 years, they let bro out, and I'm going to say they let him out in December, and he was dead a couple months later. I got a homie, I believe, got released on Compassion Release. He been stretching that shit out for a long time. More than a year? What? 
plots and he look healthy he got plans yeah. plotting doing shit yeah and i always wondered like what percentage of dudes get out on pa- compassionate release that actually beat the odds it's some life it's yeah. a few it's a few hey uh free low reese from 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 uh 1200 block uh, he's, like uh, you know what i'm saying he he's sick right now they don't want to let him go i don't know i've never met him you know what i'm saying he, he from the other side of the spectrum but free him though you know what i'm saying i just he got talk. a serious condition to right him. I just talked to Lil Reese, uh, i say about a week ago. Mm-hmm. He does have terminal brain cancer. He was given a compassionate release by the feds, but Riverside County wants to hold him for another case. So he's fighting that right now with probably, according to them, according to the feds, he was he's supposed to have already passed mm-hmm. in 2023. We're, we're already, what, six months yep, into 2024. Yeah, and he's still one in know, seven months. This was yeah, we're in, the, we're in the seventh month. Yes, yeah, it does. The the uh the uh, I think it's more uh, personal with Riverside because they knew. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's where he made his whole. That's where he, <laughs> yeah. legacy. he built his rep back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't so, no joke. Nah, man. Uh, I, hey, I did a great interview with Lil Reese, man, almost a decade ago. That had to have been around 2013, 14, 15, around there. And I don't like driving far for interviews. I like to keep everything local, right here in LA. I ain't trying to pass Long Beach, Compton, Watts, right. L.A. But when bro said, you going to pull up on me in Riverside? I was like, yeah, I'm going I'm to I'm pull up on you. Drove all the way out there, did a dope interview, man. And, That's uh, right. Go tap in. Go to Street TV to check that interview out. But, um, hey, do you think that Keefe D will find a different way? I, obviously, he was granted bail by the judge. He's allowed to get bailed out. Will he find another way to get out? Well, if we just agreed that WAC was his only, probably his only shot, now it's going to be like if they make him stipulate where you can't make no money, is Wax still going to be willing to bail you out? Well, I think there's still some value into bailing him out because whether he wins or loses, you still got the story on him. And if he signs the rights over, wh- whoever develops it can make sure he get his cut on the low in the back end or whatever. Yeah, there's ways around that. As long as long as he gives the rights over to whoever whoever bails him out, he's gonna show I'm sure the most amount of love to to say all right, you can do my story. You think America really wants to do a series on Tupac's killer, alleged killer? I think there's some value to that story. Yeah, everybody. Movie? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Everybody was interested in uh, Tupac must die. Was that that was like a. Uh, Series? No, that was that was G Malone. He did the music yeah, video. That's, what I'm that's three minutes. Not everybody. No, no, but see, it oh. ain't the, like like doing it through him. That's the way. Cause Tupac resting in peace. Uh, 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 Suge ain't gonna mess with. Well, Suge sold his life rights fifty times. Uh, everybody in the car is gone. That's a good way to do a Tupac story from a different angle. You know what I'm saying? You can still but tell I mean, that story. A, a host, but a, a series highlights the life of the alleged killer. If you if you put the South sides in there, like in in this gang culture and the back and forth with the mobs in the South in there, it'd be interesting. I don't see the model for a series. I mean, you got you got the mob pyrus, you got the South Side Compton Crips, you got Tupac Shakur, you got Mike Tyson, mm-hmm. you got all these storylines. You know, P Diddy. Um, but it's a one day event. I, but see, if yeah, I, you could drag that out though. If, if through I, a series, it's hard. Yeah. If if, if I was Puffy, I'd bail him out and get him killed. First of all, you have to, <laughs> here's the here's the story. How does Southside's Compton Crips even link up with Biggie and and, and Puffy? That's the story right there because that's where it starts. They they create a relationship. Then you have the relationship between with Pac and Death Row and Mob Pyru. There's multiple storylines there. Then you go backtrack and you, you talk about some other shootings that happened. Uh, be, and then lead up to but this shooting. series to lead up to the death of Tupac. I just don't see it. If you tell a story right, you know what I mean? You can make anything sound good. You can tell a story about taking a shit and make that sound like something. Like, hey, I thought that the, the Jeffrey Dahmer 10 episode series was incredible. And I, I, I don't really care for Jeffrey Dahmer, but they made a 10 part series about this dude. That's a documentary. No, that was a TV show. Oh, oh yeah, they, they turned it into a TV show with characters, all that. It's, mm. a, it's an art to that, though. Yeah. People know how to chop shit down. And didn't you see the USA um, 10-part series on the the whole Biggie Tupac thing? With Greg, they took Greg Caden's book, which was called um, was Murder, Rap. Murder Rap, and turned that into a 10-episode show. About? About Biggie, Pac, the not shootings. the killer. No. Alleged killer. That's, what, that's what I'm saying. It's a difference. It's a difference. Okay, well, we'll see. Somebody's gonna do it eventually. Probably, yeah. probably not. Uh, whack. It's not necessarily about Keefe D. 
No, it's not necessarily gonna happen. Look who's trying to do it, whack. <laughs> Bro, that's not just a automatic. I, I ain't, he ain't gonna be the one writing the script though. That's not the point to produce it. A Keefy D series is not as lucrative as it sounds without just thinking about Tupac. You have to make that whole thing leading up to connect to Tupac. I think it can be done. I think it'd be interesting because it got the uh, LA element to it. But definitely, uh, I don't think WAC 100 has the skill set to do it. I don't, I don't think he yeah. he, yeah, he don't plan he on. Gonna, he was going to outsource that anyway. Oh, I yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, but speaking of Tupac and Elvis Presley, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did a little research, Munch. Mm -hmm. Monthly Spotify listeners, Tupac has 22, 22 million. Elvis' is old ass who died over 50 years ago has 40, 41. 42, 44 41, I think. million. Double yeah. the amount of monthly Spotify listeners. That's one thing. Here's the uh, second thing. The value of the estate. Tupac's current estate value is 40 to $50 million, which is respectable, right? Mm, definitely. Elvis Presley's estate is worth $500 million to $1 <laughs> billion. And this man died over 50 years ago. Okay. We all watch sports. You know you could watch the NBA game and you see how a nigga get like a sneaky 25 points. Like, damn, he, he did that. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Sadell, that, Sadell Three of the Lakers. He used right. to sneak in some good games. He, he be get a, he get a sneaky. Uh, he run it up. You feel me? But but yeah, like I said, me being younger, that 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 play a part too. But we just have to see twenty years from now if niggas still speaking on uh, on Tupac. Well, look, I was six. They years, will be. I was six years old when Elvis died, so I knew nothing about Elvis. Literally growing up, alive. I learned about Elvis. I was six when Tupac died, or seven. Oh. Okay, but <laughs> this is but Tupac told us this is the white man's world, so that's why it's going to be harder for his impact to outreach Elvis's when it's just coming to American culture. It's just so many more of them. Okay, and then we got to de define the, the word impact. You know what I mean? Okay, they got they teach a class at, at universities on a Tupac. You got a course. Wait, 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 wait. We're, we're this is a capitalist society. He just said mm -hmm. 40, 50 million versus. 500 million that's impact alone right there indicates the the totality of it all okay when we all right all right somebody uh it was a debate whether nipsey's a legend or not then but i just think that nipsey's very impactful he, he, he made an impact on people so that's why i said we got to define the word impact and then you know what i'm saying no impact speaks for itself whose son got uh nipsey uh funeral stevie stevie okay then you had people we flashed to africa and they was showing love to him after he passed. That's a legendary reality. That, that's 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 impactful. It's it's legendary bro. impact. You could meet somebody one time, and, and that, that that was a impactful interaction. But that's a legendary amount of impact to witness. Yeah, but see, yeah, I don't want to go into how he was trying to uh, look leg legendary in music and all that. I'm just saying he's a very impactful person. These are the most impactful entertainers in the last 50, 60 years: Elvis Presley, Frank Sinatra. Michael Jackson, Garth Brooks, um, give me another. Dolly Parton, she's still alive. Um, Whitney, Whitney, uh, Whitney is probably at the top ten. Yeah, Whitney Houston. My mama will squabble you down if you don't mention Whitney. Yeah, <laughs> definitely put. Um, but like, those are the people. I mean, as a black man, Michael Jackson's got it. Yeah, definitely. He's got it. Hey, I don't mean to derail. Hey, don't you think it should be a law when somebody like Michael Jackson get killed? It should the the trial should be ran a little different, cause other than everybody in that jury probably more likely was raised uh, raised on Michael, so you don't really got a fair chance. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, you you're 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 getting convicted. But I've often thought yeah. that there the way okay you go to court, the lawyers are college graduates, the judges are college graduates, the bailiffs are professional, the stenographer is professional, and then you bring twelve random Joes. In to make the most important decision, and I always thought we should have a system of professional jurors, maybe. But they do. It's your choice to uh, judge or jury, trial by judge or trial by jury, and man, sometimes some. I think people should roll the dice and go trial judge, by judge. Huh? Yeah, somebody That's, who understand the law better. Yeah, right. Because I can't, I can't put my life in these people's hands, and they uh, uh, so and so fan. You know what, what I'm saying? Who was the doctor? Conrad, the yeah, doctor. Conrad Murray. That doctor should have had a uh, judge trial. For right. sure, mm -hmm. but, but he was no matter what he was wrong. He Even, was gonna get found, found. He was administering a drug in a private facility, a private home that is only supposed to be used in a hospital. Well, Michael asked for so it. So there, yeah, Michael. Hey, and he was paying him a hundred thousand a month. 
So you're getting paid 100000 a month. Like, you, hey, it goes back to the lyric of your song. It's a cold road. You stick to the script. You got to stick to the script. Mm -hmm. Conrad was supposed to stick to the script and say, Michael, I love you. You're uh -huh. a legend. I cannot bring the propofol home. Me being, you know, me and being. Michael was probably like, I'm paying you 100000 a, a, a month. Okay. Fuck all what you got to say. I, right? I, I, no, no, no. Me being. What all of that? That's, that's what happened. Dr. Conrad Murray, I would have did exactly what he did. Uh, I just, uh, is 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 messed up that uh mike got up out of here but if you saw dope before i'm pretty chance uh, you, you'll do that too yeah but it reminds me of a ordeal you went through in the last couple weeks hey <laughs> I, I have to stick to the script <laughs> on that right. one <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna keep it at that right, right there right but um i think conrad was put in a very t touchy situation you, you're making a hundred thousand a month and Michael is probably saying, come on, Conrad, there's, a, there's gallons of that shit just laying around. Just bring some of that shit home. I'm paying. <laughs> and you know how many times he probably threw in his face? I'm paying you $100,000 a month. Why the fuck you think I'm paying you? I want the propofol. How, how, how often do you think he was taking that? Uh, because I, cause when I got shot in the head, they put me under with that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, yeah. how could somebody use that as a recreational drug? And then after I got put down uh, off that... I understood how he came up with Ever Neverland. Because you'd be kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, there's a reason why that drug is never supposed to leave the hospital. Mm. You know? <laughs> I can't understand how somebody could function or... I hey, think. you got to be crazy to even be willing to be under the influence right. of that drug, Ultimately, right? Ultimately, his addiction was sleep. He didn't want to do number sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, that shit make you, like, loony. Oh, he, it's not I, just sleep. I think you... you I mean... I don't know. You you escaping reality for sure. So that's why I say I understand how he came up with Ever and Everland. I understand that. Yeah. But that, you think he was on it that long? No, nah, that, that goes way back. That's what I'm asking. Never, how, yeah. how often he do that? And Who knows? Never Everland been around, though, for years. I should have went to that trial. I, I didn't have any interest in it. But uh, it, it was a historical trial, though. I should have sat in on it. But um, man, he was guilty from the jump. When you, when you come to court and all them people got them, them signs up for Michael? Yeah. Man, that's bad, bro. Mm. Well, at least he didn't get like stretched out. He didn't get like 15 years. I think he got like three or four years. Yeah, that's probably, manslaughter. He's already free. I'm you sure. You know, Michael Cole, nigga, when they couldn't get him for them babies, all them white babies and all them people came up there and he beat that shit. Oh yeah, in Santa Barbara, yeah, he went on yeah. trial. Yeah, but hey, Michael is definitely impactful. Hey, you asked the question on the last episode, Munchie. Well, how many how many documentaries or DVDs are there between Tupac and Elvis? So I did a Elvis Presley DVD <laughs> documentary search. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even count them. I, I was just scrolling. I said, I, I'm not, I can't even count the yeah, number Elvis. Of, of Elvis Presley documentaries. I think that's the number one show of residency in Vegas and throughout the, the year. And here's the crazy part. When Elvis died of an OD, the first theory what's, what's what's the theory what's what do we use oh we die from conspiracy. The, well, yeah, the first conspiracy theory was elvis didn't die what is the first conspiracy theory with tupac, tupac. he faked his death yeah. and one of the things about elvis is that they said they spelled his name wrong on the tombstone wow aaron i guess has two a's mm. his middle name is aaron elvis aaron presley aaron is spelled wrong Wow, they haven't like, fixed that all these years? I don't know if it's fixed by now, but that was one theory. Like, oh, they if if they spelled his name wrong on the tombstone, bro is alive. But just think about how many, like, no matter where you go in the world, it's a fake Elvis performing to be like Elvis. You don't have to look like Elvis. He just throw the gear on. That's a good one right there. You can go almost all places. There's going to be a fake Elvis. Yes. Atlantic City. Um, Vegas, for Vegas, sure. Vegas, Hollywood Boulevard. Yes. Um, and Venice you, Beach. You see fake Michaels. Yeah, you see fake Michaels, you do. But you ain't never seen no fake Tupac Shakur. You get laughed at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but uh, I just wanted to touch on that. That actor that played Tupac in Notorious is horrible. In Notorious? Yeah. The I, other one. I got a question for you. Who's the first actor to, to play Tupac in any role since he, after he died? First? The first actor to ever pl have a Tupac role. Is it our boy from New York? In, fact, in fact, every time I see this actor, I just I just automatically say, oh, they go Tupac. You want to uh, Anthony Mack or Mac? What's his name? Mackie. Anthony Mackie. You what know? else does he play? I don't yeah, know. What, what role oh, do he play? He, he he had the wings in one of those crazy uh, power. Um, well, I don't watch that. Uh, Anthony Mackie. Uh, who else? Anthony Mackie played. I heard the name, but I, I want to know what. Uh, yeah, I, I can't put a. Uh, he was a superhero in one of those weird. Uh, oh, not um, black uh, black lightning. I, I'm not I'm not sure the name of it, uh -huh. but he had a cold role in one of those superhero. Uh, I know he had wings and was flying and was beating ass. I, I, your, your, your little homie said he he wanted to play Tupac. Your little homie, uh, Young Buck. 
<laughs> no, for real. Buck did it. Y'all, y'all, y'all think Young Buck resembled Tupac like that? No, but people used to tell him he was a new Tupac. When I met him, uh-huh. he used to tell me. First day I met him, when he heard me rap. He was like, man, niggas be on me with that Puck shit. Fuck that. You got it, man. You got it. <laughs> Hey, you remember Darius Love tried? He he campaigned to play Tupac for years in, in the Benny Boom movie. They end up. Using, who is Darius Love? Darius Love. Oh, he's an actor that kind of resembles Pac. Oh, uh, I don't be knowing him name, but yeah. I, I probably know the face when you when I see. Yeah, him. he he campaigned for it, but they gave it to some uh, this other actor. Demetrius. Yeah, Demetrius. That's my homie's son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My homie Meech from one I know. That's, that's was son. that the Benny Boom movie? Well, I'm not sure. That's the one that went. Yeah. That, yeah, it was the one. All right. Well. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to say that Elvis Presley has a huge, bigger impact even today in 2024 right. than uh, Pop. The moral of that, on Street TV, we, we fact check shit. <laughs> Facts over feelings, hey, always. I was surprised that his estate was worth $500 million and he's been dead for almost 50 years. I was surprised you were surprised. You, uh, you're not surprised by that? $500 no. million dollar estate? I wouldn't have known what to guess, but yeah. now that you say it, no, that sounds about right. I thought Pac would be more worth more than 40 or 50. That's Man, not shabby. You s- Oh, you said worth more than that. Yeah, I thought Pac would be maybe closer to $100 million. You know, Pac didn't make it out of his 20s, bro. That's another thing. Hey, Steph, my wife asked me this incredible question last night. She said, who who do you pick over Pac in his prime in 95, 96 or Kendrick Lamar now? Shout out to K-Dot, but Pac, I mean, it's no comparison. I said it's an unfair comparison. Yeah, it's a different time and Pac has... No, no, forget about the time. They were doing hard copies back then. The, the time, you have to and be that able that was harder, to, right? You got you to gotta be able to adjust for the time. Who Who's hotter, who's bigger? Pac in 95, 96, or K-Dot now? It's too Pac. easy to get a plaque these days. Tupac was bigger. I, I say Pac was bigger because Pac only had a four-year career. And there's less people that are that big K-Dot is 37 now. Pop Correct. died at 25. Right. So K Dot has 12 more years of life, which yeah. is, it makes it an unfair comparison. K Dot is a humum- humongous success, but you just talk about comparison that, like, yeah, Tupac is, go back to impact and all that. Yeah, Tupac. I think the better way to ask the question is you take K Dot's first five years of his career and Tupac's, because he only had four or five years. Tupac. And it's Tupac by far, right? But, but, but. It took, t- it took all this time for K Dot to become who he is. But but even the record sales, how they how, you, how they put it out these days, it was the harder grind back then. Yeah, well I I, I think well everybody's still on the same grind. I so. think you had less choices as um, superstars in hip hop back then, so I think people fell in love with the person that had the most shine easier. It wasn't a Drake uh, like if you if, if you go from Kendrick, it's a lot of niggas that they consider on Kendrick Drake competition. When it was Tupac, he kind of had it sold up. It was like him, Jay Z, Nas. I think, Biggie. I think it's I think it's easier now to become a, a a superstar than back then. True, that's why it might be more of them. You don't need you don't need the machine behind you if you got an internet presence and you just boom you get get the streaming and shit. You like you get some you get to the dough, but they both they both the kings for everything. All right, let's move on to our last topic. We spoke about this last week. Icon was feeling a little salty that Mexicans were underrepresented. And the K dot, what, what, what was that? It, it actually did have that name, K dot and friends. Yeah, K dot. No, Ken and friends. Ken and friends. Ken and friends. <laughs> I've never heard of Kendrick Lamar referring to himself just as Ken. Ken. It's either K dot or Kendrick. I but, mean, you know, playing yeah. with words is progressive. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, so he was upset that the Ken and friends event, which was really a, uh, a Juneteenth event, Ken and friends event, a celebration of the battle with Drake that had, didn't have more Mexicans, right? So once he felt the backlash on the internet, he took to the food community and responded. Did you load it up? I'm about to play it right now. Let's, let's play that clip right now. All right, I'm going to play it right, right quick. This clip is four minutes, so... Uh... Well, you are they both for four minutes, or you said the wrong thing last time? No, no his response. It was short of an apology from what I hear. Yo, there was no nothing apologetic about it whatsoever. You know what it is, LA Icon. You know what it is, LA Icon. His Food name is community. LA. Food Community Podcast. You are now watching another segment of Icon Reacts. So, 
There is a viral clip on the internet right now of me, which is titled Mexicans Feel Underrepresented at Juneteenth Concert. I'd like to add context and clarity to this whole situation. And I'd like to start off by saying, number one, I did not know that it was a Juneteenth concert. To my knowledge, the show was called Ken and Friends Pop-Up Concert. I thought the show was a victory lap on him in the battle with Drake. Second of all, I did not know exactly what Juneteenth stood for. I said that. I know now. Juneteenth stands for and is celebrated because of the emancipation of people that were enslaved, a.k.a. the abolishment of slavery. So, you know, shout out to Juneteenth, right? Black people. But um, my statement was clipped and titled, which took away the context from which my statement, which is I started off the statement by saying, I woke up this morning to a lot of posts about Kendrick Lamar unifying Los Angeles gangs on that stage. Uh, Kendrick had all of Los Angeles outside, things of that nature. Again, I did not know it was a Juneteenth event. Nowhere in my mind do I think Mexicans or Latinos are entitled to to perform at a Juneteenth event. One Latino did, shout out to Ojeezy. But again, I don't think we're entitled to uh, to perform at such an event. Now, I think it's safe to say all of you would agree that if it wasn't a Juneteenth event, my statement has absolute validity. There's no Mexicans on stage and you're saying all of Los Angeles hip hop scene is present or all of the gangs in Los Angeles are being represented. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, yeah, there should be Mexicans there. Again, the clip was taken. It was titled what it was titled. Uh, we do live in a content era on the internet and you know they made content of my statement Uh, it's unfortunate that it was taken out of context and it was clipped however it was clipped but um it is what it is and here we are so again i did not know it was a juneteenth event i did not know what juneteenth stood for i now know and mexicans are not entitled to be present on a stage celebrating juneteenth but yeah that's what it is, man. Shout out to Juneteenth, now that I know what it actually stands for. Shout out to Kendrick Lamar. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to all of those of you at home that also didn't know what Juneteenth was. But now you know exactly what Juneteenth stands for because of this video. You know, shout out to everyone watching the food community, man. Happens. Excuse my ignorance. Yeah. LA icon, full community. You know what it is, baby. I'm out. These fool. Man. I just noticed something. When I had a conversation with him about this via text, and he used the word entitled, I left away thinking he was suggesting that Mexicans should have been entitled. But when I just heard what he said right now, that they aren't entitled, I went to go check our text thread to see if he was contradicting himself, and I realized... He was saying here that he realized they are not entitled. I misread it, so I want to say that on his behalf. Okay. But uh, what was your general feeling of this? I don't know what to call this. Uh, I, I was thinking that this was supposed to be an apology type. Did, nah, the, cap- yeah, did the caption say that's what it was supposed to be? No, uh, oh, it just says his from. reaction. It's his icon's oh, reaction. Oh, oh, okay. I feel like he summed it up in the beginning. Ken and friends. How can you feel offended if you're not considered amongst someone friends. <laughs> it's just the end of it right there. All the other shit trying to sound intelligent and all the other ramifications. He had a, a guest list of friends that he invited and that's it. I got chewed up in the comments. That was like, you know what I'm saying? Regarding what? Uh, I guess I went too easy on the Hispanics or uh, too, too, oh, yeah. too on the fence with it. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, much you sound stupid. 
Oh, but like, shit, damn, that's what it is. Hey, there's some black folks that want you to go all the way hard on Mexicans. Um, I don't think we should just go hard on Mexicans, but there are there's a time and a place when criticism needs to be expressed. Yeah. And I don't I don't think this was uh I don't think this video does him does any justice to the whole issue. First and foremost, the enslavement of a people. <laughs> Why couldn't he just say black people? Right. That was Juneteenth was a celebration of the enslavement of black people for over 200 and something years. But how do we have to educate him about why we throwing a party? I don't have no idea what Cinco de Mayo stands for, but I know it's they shit. And I know I don't be invited. You don't have to explain to me why y'all throw that party for me to feel like I understand why I'm not entitled to be there. No, he didn't even know that day was Juneteenth. He thought it was on the 16th though. So he, he was all the way out at the ballpark anyway. He was way, like, you know what I'm saying? Are you like the Latino attorney? No, you, he, he said, I thought it was the 16th. Because you did that for lefty gunplay to a degree, too. I think you tried. No, no he, had, he, he he didn't have no knowledge of what Juneteenth was at all. He he, he didn't even know that the Ken and Friends thing was even on when the it was lefty, day. When it was lefty gunplay, you were saying, I don't think he meant it like that. No, I just think he need to stay away from conversations. He need a PR. All right, let me, let me also mention something else. The clip that we played last week, which was an abbreviated clip from a longer podcast episode, was not taken out of context. I went back. There's no need to, for us to replay mm -hmm. the full part of that thing. I went back and watched the actual. Actually, I think if we went back and played the whole thing, it'd be worse. It's worse. Mm -hmm. So, an Icon, it was not taken out of context at all. You said what you said. Either you stand on it or apologize, one or the other. Only thing he really admitted, really admitted, he didn't know what it meant. And I heard that, like, he said, he, he said, you think I have something to do with being a Juneteenth event? He said, like, what you, what'd he say? What you mean by that? Or No, no, he, he was like, no. He said it was June, Juneteenth, right? He was like, no, I thought that was the 16th. They was like, no, the 19th. That was the actual response. Then his response was, okay, like like so? Like, you no, know he's the one that suggested that I thought it was on the 16th. Yeah, but after they cleaned it up, he was like, he's still oblivious. But he was aware of Juneteenth. As soon as he heard the, heard the word, he tried to give us a date for it. Do he gave back? I'm not sure about that. I don't just listen to him. I don't take him to be the brightest dude, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Like I, I, I don't. You think the fact that he has? I just noticed this. L. A. in his name. L. A. Icon. L. A. Icon makes him think he's more part of our L. A. than we actually view him or them. Wait, what do you mean by our L. A. Black L. A. Yes, Black L. A. Because when he says he's offended, because they say Kendrick had all the L. A. All the gangs, and we're saying that from our perspective of the people, that was a truth. But they weren't saying all. We weren't thinking we're leaving the Mexicans out, but we still thought with all the confusion we have in amongst our community through the years, it was still a a, 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 a showing of everybody. Yeah. That was a percentage of everybody of our shit. And we didn't think nobody from the outside gonna say, oh, you said all of LA, what about us? What about the few whites that run the streets of LA? Were they unrepresented? The few Asian gang members. Yeah, well, you know, one of the criticisms that Lil Doc got, I received some of it too, because I was working on some similar truths, is like, how can you truce up with a Latino gang when y'all backyard is still messed up, meaning, you got multiple black conflict going on. You got multiple black rivalry going on. And you're going to truce it up with the Florences? You're going to truce it up with the Latino gang? Mm. That's a lot of criticism that Lil Doc had to take in the beginning. Mm. I, I could be wrong, but I think uh, before Lil Doc left the streets, he, uh, he, he connected some dots with some black gangs also. He did. He, uh, with the kitchens. On, the Broadways. Based on that stuff. the Broadways, yeah. Based on those types of sediments, the homies, I've heard conversations where a lot of people agree that we should be able to patch other things based on that. That's not like a foreign concept. I, I kind of agree because I, in a different like uh, dynamic, I'll be telling Skip, I, I'd rather deal with the blood on blood conflicts that's a little easier to patch up. So then we go extend, you know what I'm saying? Well, when it comes to truces, I believe you should work on whatever the opportunity presents. Sometimes mm. it's going to be black, black, crip, 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 blood. And then sometimes it's going to be Latino, black. Mm. Whatever opportunity presents, jump on it and make it happen if you're down for saving lives. But I do understand the criticism, though. I do understand how people sitting in the room is like, so we trucing it up with these Mexicans? No, I, 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 know? I understand I the full yeah. spectrum as well, yep. So th they think to look deeper, though, because he he, he connected dots with Black Hoods, too, though. It's just how big East Coast and Florence is, that stand out the most. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that on Icon's 
um, reaction is he felt that if it wasn't Juneteenth, his statement is still valid. Bullshit. And it's, 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 it doesn't matter if this Juneteenth at all, right? It's, right. It's Ken and friends. Right. And just because somebody looked at what happened, they classified it a certain way, doesn't give him the right to decide what we should have or should not have done. Did that come out of Kendrick mouth that he he united LA or he united the gangs in LA? I don't think he said any of that. I think it was all a reaction from outside saying all this. Yeah, Kendrick never even spoke on He this. just said sometimes you gotta pop out the show, niggas. All right. <laughs> so he never even said that at all. And it was a Mexican Mexican there that, that performed. So yes. I mean, oh boy, just you know, he a little he you know what I mean? He got too much pride. It's a, it's a such thing having too much pride. Now mm-hmm. check this out. I, I I have I had this full community YouTube page up and I was scrolling. And I was looking through it. Guess what? There's a huge lack of on the food community YouTube page in terms of interviews and collaborations. Black people. Ding 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 ding. ding. <laughs> I mean, and, and I don't expect for them to exactly. have a bunch. Exactly. That's cool, right? We're, exactly. We're not tripping on that. Is full community? What? That's the channel, and indicted is the is the show, or or is that too, what, like? Well, full community is a show that LA Icon does his podcast on. Now, Indicted is a show that he produces that his wife is the host of okay. on a separate channel. Yeah, her show be having black, uh, black, yeah, black she, presence. They do have a few. They they do have a, a sprinkle of brothers on the platform, mm-hmm. but it's predominantly. So, are you saying, in the context where he was speaking, do you feel like we're underrepresented on his platform? I do believe that that we are underrepresented on the food community. Is I it a hip hop based platform? Yeah, it is. I can oh, tell yeah, you this: yeah. I got more Latino people on street TV. Mm. And they have black folks on Food Community. That's What's up a fact. with that LA icon? That's a fact. That's a fact. In fact, I just did an incredible interview with an I-13. That's going to be coming out soon. I don't want to say his name because then all y'all going to rush to him and try to interview him before I even drop it. <laughs> and then um, I just re-released an interview I did of a Latino from East LA, but th- um, that I dropped a couple years ago. Um, I-, I got a bunch of them. I did Sunny from Burbank. I got a bunch of them. I- in fact, I'm the first one to put. Latinos from the streets on the internet. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. I'm trying to remember, who was my first Latino interview? Uh, I think it was a dude from Florence. I did that interview in like 07, 08. I also did an incredible interview with a dude from Big Top Locals. I've been doing this. I've never discriminated. My Armenian partner said he spoke to some his Serenio partners this week, and they was telling him how far back you go, how well they was familiar with what you do. And here's a, here's another issue when it comes to interviewing Latinos, because I've been doing this since, you know, 05, 06, 07. The politics from their communities is a lot different, and it mm. was it was much stricter or more strict in them years of not coming on camera, not doing interviews. The only exception is if you was a rapper. Mm-hmm. So now we're starting to see slowly changing. Yes. A whole bunch of non-rapping Latinos are popping out and showing themselves. Correct. So now there's an opportunity. And now that that exists, there's a bunch of Latino-based platforms that they get them now. Okay. They get them. Makes sense. But yeah, I want everyone to know, I was, I was shooting y'all interviews 20 years ago when nobody else was doing it here in L.A. That's right. Here in Los Angeles. Um, the last thing I'll say about the Icon reaction was, I didn't, I didn't think that was cool when he said, shout out Juneteenth. Juneteenth is not a person. It's a, it's a, it's a I don't know. Uh, there was a tinge of arrogance yeah. attached to his whole <laughs> little speech right there. It's cool. We could take that. But down. I still want to invite LA Icon Pull to up. chop it up with Spider on Facts Over Feelings since y'all already had it the back and forth going, yeah, it makes sense. And we, we are actually colleagues. We've worked together yeah. on multiple occasions. It makes sense. And I worked with you, LA Icon, um, when we did the L-Boy interview. Well, that had to be at least 2013, 2014. L-Boy from Pasadena. Okay. I went and she, uh, L-Boy asked me to pull up. So what do I usually do? Pull, pull up. up. I pull, pull up. up. Pull up like Huggies. <laughs> I pulled up. He wanted me to shoot the behind the scenes of him shooting the video. And guess who was the videographer of his video that night? Icon. Icon was. So um, I always pulled up for L Boy. I don't know even what happened to L Boy. I haven't heard. I heard heard I'm about Bro in a, in a minute. He was all over the internet in like 13, 14, 15. He was okay. the right. w- when it wasn't a lot of Latinos on the internet. L Boy was the one. Like one okay. Yeah, I, I I think he uh, he 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 think L A is Mexicans. That's that's us. They they got the strong hold on L A. So he figured we belong there. L A R C. You know, and, and they uh, quote Tupac. A whole yeah. lot. Yep, yeah, they take that line to heart. That that two that Tupac line to live in LA that that go a long way with the Browns. 
know what I'm saying? And it, it does. I mean, we do the numbers and look at the landscape. Yes, I understand why they feel like LA is their home. No one argues that. But that doesn't mean that we are not at home without you being at our event. It's our home as well. Yeah, but yeah, but and then another thing, look at the cities and the, st- the signs. El Segundo. Se- El Segundo. San Pedro. Santa Monica. Alameda. Uh, Los Alamitos. Santa Fe. Santa Fe out there. Yeah. Bro. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, but. And let me throw this out there. I, I don't want to say his name because we had a private conversation. Eventually, maybe we will go deeper on this. But someone from the food community reached out to me. Mm. And he said that Icon doesn't speak for all of the food community. That's right. And that I don't agree with some of the things he said. Mm. So I don't know how many people are affiliated with the food community. I don't want to just say. Does food mean like food? Like what's up, food? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's where they get that from, mm. without the L on it. Right. So, so obviously not everybody from the food community, which is probably multiple people, I don't know, uh, agree with him, Icon on that. I mean, hey. And maybe we can get that dude to come on. If y'all want to be at the party, y'all want to be down, y'all can say that. But that's not across the board. It doesn't go like that. Everybody don't even want to come to the party like y'all want to be at it. Hey, we ain't going to say y'all, because that's that dude. Who else you hear speak out on it? Well, him. Yeah, that, that directly at Icon, because I don't know if a lot of people, like a boy said, even agree with. No, he's saying he, some, he Alex came away with that, even though that guy doesn't agree, mm-hmm. he feels that there are that do over at that platform. I was okay. talking to those. Okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. We're going to get OGZ up here, because we know mutuals, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm on the, I want to know how he felt about the uh, you know, statement that he made. Don't you think sometimes rappers just just stay rappers and stay in their lane, or do you think it's oh, it's advisable for young rappers to express their political opinions? That's why I said I think Lefty need to just rap, <laughs> yeah. like certain certain subjects he should stay away from. Yeah, everybody not 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 versed yeah, because this type of shit. He'll make the mistake of letting everybody know how you really feel again. Man, or you just not ready, bro. You can't articulate yourself. It's like some of these athletes is dummies and or jocks. He can, or he can mean exactly what he said and how he looked it like, too. Okay, look who tried to represent us and talk to Trump, a comedian. Uh, Steve Harvey wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> I would prefer D.L. Hughley had, if it had to be a, a, a comedian, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't, that's not your lane. You tell jokes. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? So people should stay in their lane. You know what I'm saying? I agree with that. Definitely. Well, you know, Tupac was one of the most vocal rappers in his time. Yes. He did not shut his mouth for nothing. It's like every time he said some shit, that shit landed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you know, he comes, I believe that he was so passionate, so powerful with the words he said is because of who his mama was and who his stepdaddy was. I found you. So you must have saw the documentary they did last year. Another one. It was one like on Netflix. It was like a, they did like three episodes. It was like three weeks in a row they had an episode. That was a cold. That's when I got to really understand what his mother really went through with that trial and her whole coming up, the struggle she oh, was. Oh, no, no. I didn't see the doc. I've, I've been researching the Black Panther Party since the 90s. I wrote in my master's thesis, I did a whole chapter on the Black Panther Party. And it's it's an incredible history, the stuff they've done, the, the, the laying out things when they needed to lay it out without hesitation. Okay, well, this documentary um, highlights her personal experience with that party and all. She went she went through some cold shit being pro perk. I believe she went on trial for a, a couple of bodies, and right? represented herself yeah. in, in one of them trials and did some, and it was some cold shit. It, went, it was and, cold. And they all got found not guilty. Yes. But I'm going to tell you, the coldest Black Panther story is right here in Los Angeles. Mm. Four hour shootout with the LAPD on Central Avenue. Mm. Ain't no other Panther Party did that. That's hard. Um, That's hard, for real. The, the leader getting assassinated at UCLA because he was really a leader. That happened in Chicago as well with uh, Fred Hampton. Mm-hmm. But they, they killed Bunchy Carter. Bunchy Carter was a Slauson. Uh, just the whole, um, there were more Panthers in police shootouts in Los Angeles than any other city. Mm. More LA Panthers shot cops mm. than any other city. So the L.A. story, and it's, it's sad because the Chicago story has been told. You're talking about documentaries. That's the New York City story. But the L.A. story was told by Rest in Peace Greg Everett in a documentary that never got mainstream publicity. How long ago was this uh, documentary? Well, he, he died during COVID in, in 2020. and he That's was recent. Yeah, he was, he was trying to finalize it, but he just didn't have the support to, mm. to tell that story. But the, I'm telling you, the lo- Geronimo Pratt going down for 20 something years for a murder that happened. He's in Oakland and the murder's happening here in LA and they linked him to it. LA got the coldest Black Panther story Mm. to be told.
You should finish. You yeah, should wrap it up. Hey, I hopefully, um, hey, if if Gregory Everett's wife is listening, I would love to, you know, pick up the baton and run with it and and see what we can make happen on that Black Panther tour. He's got the last interview with Geronimo Pratt. Mm. He's got um, he's got interviews with the guys in the shootout with the LAPD for four hours. Half them guys are deceased now. He's got shoot the interviews with with, with those guys. He's got uh, and just an incredible amount of interviews. Uh, did, did, did Nipsey uh, Doctor CB documentary ever come out? Uh, I don't even know. I don't even I know. I think uh, Nick Cannon tried to pick up the ball. Then I think when he got in that controversy saying the J word with them people, I think he dropped all that. Well, maybe somebody can jump on the L.A. Uh, Black Panther story. But, uh, hey, man, let's uh, wrap this up. Uh, any Anything else that we need to say regarding this L.A. icon, quote-unquote, non-apology? <laughs> you'll, uh, still, you'll still have him. If he agrees, you definitely do. Definitely gonna, the, yeah. the invitation is still open, man. We I'm, I'm, I'm eager and, and interested to have some healthy dialogue on this subject in person, man, not over text message, not waiting – and you say something on your platform. Let's talk about it like men and see if we can come to some understanding. And if we don't get LA Icon, maybe another representative from the food community. I was gonna say he need to come with some help. Like he should, <laughs> he should bring somebody else, like to piggyback and help him kind of express what he's trying to say. A lot of people don't know how to put put words together, bro. True. All right, man. Uh, all our all our contacts, all our socials are in the show notes below. Tap in with Spider Munchie and myself. If you want to leave us a DM, a question, a concern. Also, we're on Spotify, iHeart, and Apple. If you're listening to us on Apple, please, right now, leave us a rating and review. And you can even leave us a question in that review. And we'll be sure to tap in with it on our next episode. And thanks for listening to Straight Politicking. We out.